Oh, hey, hey, crafters, crocheters, knitters, and yarn enthusiasts. My name is Jenny. Welcome to Granny Square Peg. Today is Saturday, June 24th, 2023. Um, so for today, I have four blankets that I want to show you. Um, they were made... I don't know, within a year of each other. And it's because I fell in love with the pattern, as I do. Like, I'll come across a pattern somewhere from a blogger, or a YouTuber, or a book, or a magazine, and I will fall in love with it, and I will have, I will be completely obsessed with it and wanna make everything in that pattern. Um, sometimes I just, I, well, I'll do a scarf, or I'll do a couple squares, or I'll do a baby blanket, or, a big blanket or sometimes I do all of those it's because I love the pattern so much and that's kind of like what I did with this one but I skipped the scarf the square and the baby blanket and I went straight to the big blanket so it is called the spider stitch right and I'll explain that one in a minute so here's a big one this is almost like a twin size blanket almost just not in length so I got a big color block of white my microphone got Velcro on it and it's sticking to the blanket. Oh, I hate Velcro. Okay, all right. Let's fix that. All right, see the Velcro? Six to the blankets. Doesn't stick to my books when I do book videos, but let's move that up there. Okay. So I like doing things in color blocks, okay? Um, so there's white and then there's a light pink and another block of white. And then a uh, darker shade of pink, more white, the light shade of pink again, and then white. And you can see I did not tie in my yarn tails because I was so undecided on whether or not I wanted to do a border, which I'm still undecided on whether or not I want to do a border. And I made this blanket back in January 2017, so six years, and I still don't know if I want to do a border on it or edging or trim. So a spider stitch, can you see that? It is a single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the same space. Kind of like the V-stitch, but the V-stitch is made with double crochets. So when you do a double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the same space, it looks like a V, V-stitch. Why we call this the spider stitch, I don't know. Maybe because, it, it, look at all this texture. Because this is where all the chain one spaces are and where we make, because when you come back, like after the first row, you do the, the single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the chain one space. And it makes for this awesome rib texture that runs up the length of the blanket. And I fell in love with it, okay. So I think it was a blogger that I had found it from and then I'm like, you know, that looks familiar. So I went and looked at all my stitch dictionaries and sure enough, I found it in my stitch dictionary. So that was, that helped me out with the numbers and the multiples. So this is the first blanket that I made, okay. The second blanket I did I did it in August of 2017 and it's completely finished. It's a little baby blanket, All right? So again, with the color blocks, there's five color blocks on this. There, it, this is a very, very creamy white and then orange and creamy white again and then the orange and then the creamy white again. Um, actually, I made two of these at the same time. There's one that's um, gray and turquoise or was it turquoise and gray i'm not sure but that one went to my nephew so i don't have that one anymore but this one and it's completely done all the yarn tails are sewn in it's ready to go it's beautiful and i love it um i don't have the yarn labels for this anymore but i'm pretty sure it's a mix of i want to say Loops and Threads Impeccable from Michaels, and there's a possibility this is Vanna's choice. I don't know. I'll see if I have any notes on it, but so far I've not been able to find any notes. So that was the second blanket that, that I had done. And then the third one I did in November 2017. And this is made with Premier Sweet Rolls. So it's still... 
it still kind of got that color block feel to it because this is one cake of yarn. That's the second cake of yarn. There's the third cake of yarn. Oh, there's the fourth. So it's got five cakes of yarn to it. Possibly six. I just kept going. I even have a note on this one. I wrote a note to myself in 2019, like two years after I made this blanket. It says, does this need more yarn? Does it need to be bigger? So even back in the day, I wasn't sure if it was big enough, but I'm actually thinking that it is. That's a good throw size. So you see, even with um, different colors and different yarns, it still comes up with that beautiful texture, right? So then blanket number four was made a good year later in September, 2018. Now I've been calling this the campfire blanket because when I started out with this one, now I actually do have a baggie that has the leftovers, the yarn hook, and all the yarn labels. So for this one, I do know the yarn I used for it. Um, I had this variegated yarn right here. It's got some reds, focus, there we go. It's got some reds, orange, greens, and this, this sky blue in there, right? And I loved this color, but I only had two balls of it and, and they were only like three and a half ounces each. So I was, I tried to color match it and I'll be darned if I did not get these colors almost like spot on. Like I did a whole block in red, then I did the variegated. I did a block in the green and then the variegated. And then I did a block in the orange and then I used blue for the border, right? So what I did was with this one is I made it actually longer, wider. What I did was is I, um, I stretched out my own arms and went like this to make sure it would go from this hand to this hand. And it did that. That's my sophisticated measuring system. My own arms. <laughs> because I wanted you to be able to wrap yourself up in it like a wrap when you're sitting around the campfire or your your fire pit in your yard or if you know if you go camping or if you're on the beach with a bonfire and it does get a little chilly but because it, it's got such autumn vibes to it and it's got such fire vibes to it I'm calling it the campfire blanket so it's long this way and it, it only comes down to my waist about my hip bone so it's not long and tall it's wide okay so that's the fourth one and i actually have a yarn tail or two sticking out of that one but it's all made with the spider stitch okay and i and i love the spider stitch so a lot of times when i'm having a love affair with a with a technique or a style or a stitch it takes me a couple months or maybe a year and then i'm done with it and if i ever go back to it and I try to make something else with it i'm like okay yeah this is all right i can take it or leave it but it turns out i really like the spider stitch because i sat down with my hook two days ago when i once i realized that i, I pulled out all my spider stitch blankets i i knew that i needed to show you guys how it's done because you guys like little tutorials at the end. So it won't be a full tutorial, okay? But I sat down with some yarn. I started with <clears throat> Red Heart Super Saver in a soft white, and then Burnett Super Value in um, soft fern. I wanna say this color's been discontinued. I scoured the internet two days ago, I could not find it anywhere. And then more Red Heart Super Saver in the soft white, which I have a lot of that floating around my house. So it turns out I still enjoy the spider stitch tremendously. So I've been, um, I started this just to show you guys how to do the spider stitch and look how far I've gotten. I'm like um, 70 rows in and um, every minute I have, I've been sitting down and I've been crocheting. 
Okay, so here we go. Ready? There is my spider stitch from the row before. There is a single crochet, a chain one, and a single crochet. So I find that chain one gap, and it's hard. You gotta really get in there. I do. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And you skip everything until you get to the next chain one space. Do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Um, so for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that first blanket that I made back in January 2017, the pink and white one. Um, I'm going to sit with it today and count out how many rows I got. I, I, I actually, I have notes for that one. I don't have the yarn labels anymore. I'm going to have to see if I can find pictures of it on the internet. Um, so I, I know what my starting chain was and I know how many rows I got out of the white. Like it'll be 17 or 22. And then how many rows I got out of each ball of pink. So I'm going to sit and get my notes in order. And then tomorrow, hopefully the sun will be a little better because, I mean, it's been very gray and rainy, so it's been hard to film. Um, and, and we'll go with, the, uh, well, tomorrow on Sunday, we'll do the pink and white blanket, and I will give you the breakdown of all of it. And I'll sit it on my step stool like I do so you can get a close-up of it, and then I'll do a close-up of the stitch. And then, you know, maybe next Wednesday or next Sunday, I'll do the next blanket, the next spider stitch, and then the next one, and then the next one, okay? So... I'm getting back into the habit of filming. I know that I've had quite a bit of a break. Um, unfortunately, depressive episodes do that to me. So I want to thank you guys for being very patient and, and kind. And for everybody who's been reaching out saying, we haven't seen you in a while. Are you okay? Thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate it. So hopefully now um, the depression is lifting a little bit. Actually, a little bit more than a little bit. <laughs> it's hard to explain. I mean, unless you suffer from depression, it's very hard to explain the ups and downs of it and the ins and outs. And um, that even on dark days, you can still function. Unless it's a super dark, dark, dark day for you. Um, so, all right. So, enough of that. Um, on to the pink and white one tomorrow when I've got more light. And I will see you guys then. Okay, so you guys ready to take a look at the first spider stitch blanket. I picked the pink one because it was the first one that I made in January 2017. So that was the first one I made. All right, it is, I have notes. Fifty two inches wide by forty eight inches tall. So it's wider than it is taller. Okay. All right, let's get you, let's do a close up. Say hello to the best orange ginger tabby cat ever. This is Bandit. Okay, so there we go. I did a color block of white and then a light shade of pink white a medium shade of pink which is more of a magenta color another color black of white the same pink that's down at the bottom and then white again all right so the thing is with the shades of pink i don't think they make them anymore but the white white is just your standard white color all right so here we go look at that texture that happens so it is a single crochet chain one single crochet in the chain one space and it creates this wonderful texture on the blanket I mean maybe maybe they call it a spider stitch because maybe it looks like little spiders crawling up I don't know look at that Beautiful, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna take it down off of my bookcases. <laughs> I actually used that step stool to put the blanket on. I'm gonna have to wait till Bandit's done his bath. 
I have to apologize for the lighting. Um, it's a bit stormy out today. I've got all the lights on, but still gives it a little bit of a yellow feel. So here's the blanket up close. All right. Um, I do have multiples for you, but, but understand that I'm not a pattern writer and I often will mistakenly get my numbers wrong. If I did everything right, it should be multiples of 15 plus two. So this blanket, my starting chain is 150. When I got to 150, I did two more chains and then those two chains become my turning chain, which I wonder if I worked into that as a stitch. I probably did. I'm wondering if my initial multiples is 15 plus one plus two. I'm sorry for the confusion. Um, I often tweak things as I go. Okay. So here is what a chart would look like. Okay. So this is where I'm counting my stitches. You know, these um, little circles are chains. Okay. And then these circles going up is the chain two. And then I would work a single crochet in the first stitch. I would skip the next one. And then in this stitch, I would do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And I would skip one do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next stitch and work it all the way down to the end. And when you're at the end, you should have two stitches left. If you don't go ahead and use the chain two that's there. So you would do the single crochet, chain one, single crochet in this stitch. You would skip and then in the last stitch, do a single crochet, chain two, and then start your next row. Okay. Um, so for this pink and white blanket, I did do a multiple of 15. I did an initial chain of 150. I used the crochet hook I used was an I, which is a 5.5 millimeter, I wanna say. Um, when you're first starting out learning how to do the spider stitch, if you use a smaller size hook, um, it actually makes these stitches so small that it makes it very hard to find that chain one space. So I would suggest going up at least two or three hook sizes until you get familiar with how this works and then you can switch down to a smaller hook size. Okay. I would also recommend stitch markers. Every time you get to a spot where you do a single crochet with a chain one and a single crochet, put a stitch marker in that chain one space. It'll help you find that chain one space when you come back on the next row. Okay. So my first color block, I made it with red heart with love. So red heart with love is still made today. Um, it's just their, their white color. Um, the skein of yarn was six ounces and I got the initial starting chain, my first row, the second row, and then rows three through 23. I actually got a lot of yardage out of that first skein of yarn. So row one, is just single crochet all the way across because I like using a row of single crochet. It gives me a nice good foundation to work into. Row two starts with the spider stitch where you do a single crochet, you skip, then you do the spider, then you skip, and then you do the spider to the end. And then row three and on is all just a repeat of row two, okay? My next set of color block is Sincerely is the name of the yarn and it's from Joann's, the fabric store. Um, I, they don't make the Sincerely line anymore, so it's just a pastel pink. Um, you can use any number four medium worsted weight yarn. Okay, I'm sorry that the, it, a lot of my stuff is with discontinued yarn. So I think the skein of yarn was five ounces maybe, because that's why I've got less rows. I got 17 rows out of the skein of pink. So I'm thinking it was a five ounce skein of yarn. And yes, I, I did, at the end of every single row, put a little check mark in a box to count off these rows in this blanket. It's time consuming, but boy, it sure does help when you are done making a blanket and you can track your progress and know exactly what you did. So the next block of white is not Red Heart Super Saver because I was using whatever I had in the house at the time. It is Big Twist from Joann's. Now Joann's still does make Big Twist. I'm assuming it was around six ounces because I got 20 rows out of the white. And then I go to Sincerely from Joann's, which I know they don't make that anymore. In the magenta color, they called this magenta 
for me it's just a darker shade of pink, right? And I got 20 rows out of that one, okay? And then we went to white again, which is Sincerely from Joann's, and I got 21 rows with this white. And then back to the pastel pink from Sincerely from Joann's, I got 18 rows out of this one. And then this last bit of white is Red Heart with Love, and I got 22 rows out of this, plus the finishing rows, all right? Once I got to row number 141, I knew I was getting close to the end of the skein of yarn, so I switched over and did um, row number 142. I did single crochets and I did them across the top of the shells or the spider stitch where I did a single crochet in the first stitch which was a single crochet and I did a single crochet in each single crochet across and I did not do one in the chain one space okay which gave me 150 stitches and then I chained two and I turned and for row 143 I did single crochet all the way across and then I was done. So it took me about a month to make this blanket. No, not even a month. If I'm looking at my numbers here, I started it January 16th, worked on it January 20th and 21st, finished it up on February 4th. Huh, I actually crochet pretty quick. And then what it is, there are notes. Oh, I drew it out on a piece of paper to see what it would look like, but I didn't have enough room to do the last color blocks. And then this is my original set of notes, and they're just um, scribbles that I do. And then I wrote it out real nice and neat, and then I wrote it out for the next one that I did, which was a baby blanket, and then another one that I did with the variegated colors. So that is my version of the spider stitch, okay? Again, 52 inches wide. 48 inches tall roughly 42 ounces of yarn and I did time myself at some point it takes me 10 minutes per row at 143 rows um, I don't know <laughs> you do the math on that a couple hours <laughs> I seriously look at all this texture Are you guys seeing this it gives this rib texture right off the blanket I love it. So that's my original starting chain and my first row single crochet and then the spider stitch. I know it's kind of, I kind of do an info dump when I do these videos. I will type out my notes in the description box. So, I mean, you can use any colors you want. I would love to see it in in um, creamy white, because you know the creamy off-whites and soft-whites are my favorite. I would love to see it done with that. I would love to see it done in yellow. I'm thinking black and gray would be nice, or white and gray would be nice. Okay, so here's what the, the edges look like with my chain twos. And see how it gives this texture? So you don't actually have to do a border but when I was done with this, I really thought that it needed a border. That's why I never finished it. These are all my yarn tails. Nice long yarn tails. Here's your, here's your tip for today. Keep your yarn tails nice and long, okay? Do not do just two inches of yarn, all right? This is not enough to sew in. This is not enough to crochet over. It will come undone. I would suggest anywhere from six to 12 inches so you have enough to weave it in, to sew it in, to crochet over it so it does not come undone. It's not a waste of yarn to make your yarn tails really long. It helps with the structure of your blanket, okay? That's your tip for today. So this, you can tell everywhere here, there's a bump. This is the, the chain two that starts the row. And I like that because it keeps me from having to do a border. But when I was done, I was thinking it needed a border anyway. I don't know. I'm so undecided. Yeah, it was six years it's been sitting around because I couldn't figure out whether or not I wanted to do a border. Now, this is a pretty shade of pink. Um, the camera, to me, when I'm looking through the lens, is making it look very bright. 
um, but when I'm looking at it in real life, it's actually a bit more toned down. It's got a bit of a, an earth tone to it. Ah, it's so pretty. And it turns out that I actually still very much enjoy doing the spider stitch. So when I got done with, um, with the last row of spider stitch and I did my single crochets across the top in, at, in each and every single crochet, but skip those chain one spaces so you can keep your count the same as your starting chain and then do another row of single crochet to help finish it off. I put a stitch marker in my last stitch right here. Okay. All right, so I do have a current project that I just started this one a couple days ago. It is done with the creamy whites. It is Red Heart Super Saver in soft white. And then this is Burnett Super Value in a soft fern. They no longer make this green color. So I have to find some other complementary colors. All right, so this is where I have to find my next ball of soft white. So I'll show you how to do the spider stitch real quick. Okay. So you see, this is the previous row. There is my first single crochet. There's the chain one. There's the second single crochet. Okay. You kind of pull this apart a little bit. Look for that space in there. Okay. And then do a single crochet in the chain one space. Then do a chain one. And then do a single crochet in that same space. And there, that's the spider stitch. I'll find that spot in there. Put your hook in there. There you go. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Now, for this blanket, I did um, move down a hook size. I am using an H because I've had plenty of practice to find that chain one space to do the next spider stitch. See, right there, I didn't even have to pull it apart to look for it. If you accidentally grab the loop from the chain one, you can tell, see? It means you accidentally grab the loop. If you accidentally go in through here, through the single crochet, or you go in here through the single crochet, once you figure it out that you might have made a mistake, if you're close enough, just rip out the yarn, go back and do it again. Crochet can be very forgiving. Okay, and then here's my last one. This is the last spider stitch in this row. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet, I'm at the last little bit of yarn where I cut it. Right? And then this is um, my first single crochet that started the row along with the chain two. And you'd be like, Jenny, you just got done telling us to have really long yarn tails. I know when you're starting out and you're not quite sure of your skill set yet, do the long yarn tails. Me, I have a joining method that I use called the Russian join and I take this and I weave it in to the yarn this way and then when I attach the soft white I will go through it and I will weave it in the other direction. So I actually wind up with a very seamless color change. Let's see if I can show you. No, I didn't do it there. Um. Ah, yes, right here. I did a join called the Russian join and you can't see it, see? <laughs> so that is, that. that's for another video later. So I am working on another spider stitch blanket and I'm enjoying it tremendously, just sitting at the end of the day, sitting on the couch working on this and I'm just using whatever was in my yarn stash after my great yarn purge. The two balls of, or skeins of Red Heart super saver that are the soft white they were leftovers from other projects but this one she needs a name um <laughs> right now i'm just calling her the cotton candy spider stitch but i don't know i'm not always 
I'm not really good at picking out names for my blankets. So, sorry about that with the, I had to change my camera because this is my backup camera. Um, the battery went on my other one and I only have one battery for it. So what do you guys think of the spider stitch? Is it something that you'd be interested in doing? You know, because it's not as complicated as some people think it is. It's actually a really nice stitch. Once you get the hang of it, I, I absolutely adore it. Um, I love the, where it seems like it's complex, but it's not. And I love that building one spider stitch on top of the next creates that texture on both sides of the blanket. I absolutely adore that. And then the colors, I mean, the white and the pink go really well together. So that's why I was so afraid to put a border on it because I would either have to do white and then I'm thinking it would be too much white or I'd have to pick a third shade of pink because I didn't have any more of that pastel pink and I didn't have any more of the magenta because by the time I got around to using what I had in my yarn stash, Joann's had already discontinued it. And so it was just yarn on, that I had and I just, I would have to put in a third shade of pink. And I never at the time thought about using a completely different color like gray. I know gray goes really well with pink, but gray doesn't always go really well with white. So, what do you think? Do you think the gray? Yeah, see, the gray would go really well with the pink. It would go really well with that pink. But, see, I don't think it goes well with the white at all. All right, so, um... Give me your comments, um, your opinions down in the comments below. Let me know, would you put a border on this blanket? And if you did, what kind of color would you use? Um, I'm not worried about stitching. Um, that always comes with whatever I, I'm in the mood to do. Uh, uh, my cats are chewing on it. It's got two marks on it. So let me know down in the comments below. Uh, I, so I've got three more spider stitch blankets to show you. And then the one that I'm currently working on, I need to dig into my yarn stash and see if I can find some more Red Heart Super Saver in the soft white. Um, it's absolutely adorable. So I think it's a little big to be a baby blanket. So even though it's pink and it falls into those girly colors, it's more of a throw size. Oh, I love it. It is so soft. So, did I give you guys all the details on it? The, the yarn, sincerely, is from Joann's for the two pastel pinks and for the magenta, and it's been discontinued. Um, and I'm thinking that this, this skeins of yarn were somewhere between five or six ounces. Um, I used two skeins of Big Twist that were white from Joann's and I'm pretty sure they still make that. I've, I've seen Big Twist. Oh, it's actually in my Joann's recently. I saw Big Twist in there. And then I did Red Heart with Love for the first block of white and the last block of white. 10 minutes a row, I had 143 rows. Yeah, 143 rows, but row two through row 140 is the spider stitch. Okay, row one is a single crochet. Row 142 is a single crochet. Um, there's the chain, and then um, row 143 is another row of single crochets. And yes, I'm sorry if my multiples do not work out. Um, it's going to be so sad for people who don't watch the video all the way through. If the multiples of 15 don't work out. So you do 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. And when I do blankets, I usually typically do not do a chain any less than 90 because it makes them way too narrow. So I do my chains at least 90 or above. And then 105, 120, 135, 150 plus two as you're turning chain. Um, let me know if you try it at 150 chains and when you get to the end, if you still need another stitch or not. And then I'll, I'll go back and um, if it's right, yay, let me know. But if it's wrong, 
uh, let me know so I can I can work on that because I, I I love this one I I really really want to share this with everybody and I want everybody to be able to make one and I want my numbers to be right but when I go back and I work through my pattern I just skim it and then I sit down with my hook so I don't always do the same thing twice and I try really hard but I got to stop being my own pattern tester. <laughs> All right, so I think that is it for today's video. I'm sorry with the with the lighting. Um, it's just what it is with sunlight and storms and and dead batteries. So, um, thank you guys for watching. For every single one of you, 1,061 of you, thank you for watching my videos. I I am completely humbled. And I appreciate every single one of you. And for those who take the time to leave a comment below, thank you. For those of you who reach out in email, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Um, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay? Share me with your friends, your family, your other crocheters in your life. Okay? Um, let me know how you guys are doing, what you're working on. And I will... I'm watching my cat climb on my bins and he's going over to a bag of yarn and he's sticking his face in the bag of yarn. Almost every morning when I come downstairs in the morning there is another skein of yarn on my floor and I'm like Arlo do you want me to make something for you? Just let me know because he keeps stealing all the yarn in the bag. Alright so I will catch you guys I don't know in the next video. Love you all. Bye.